Hello, everyone. Pastor Jeremiah here. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. And this is Worship Wednesday. Worship Wednesday. And uh, I, I, we call it Worship Wednesday because if, if, if you are watching this video and it's the morning time, you're on the way to work or you're trying to set some time before you go to school or you're, um, you haven't quite left the house to go to work yet. I want you just to get in your minds that today I'm going to worship the Lord. No matter what I see, no matter what I hear, no matter what I feel, no matter what comes against me, God, I'm going to worship you. This is Worship Wednesday. And so thank you for tuning in. And uh, this week, as I said yesterday and the day before, we are on location right here at Hope Farms, Hope Farms Women's Ministry. And this is a ministry that just has we've it's just open and it is to receive women with life controlling issues who want to be set free, who want to be delivered, who want to be restored, who want to see a miracle in their lives. And uh, this place is a miracle. We are sitting in a miracle. God worked it to where this place has been opened. This is his hand and it's for his glory. And uh, and so in 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 right in line with all that, the whole week. Today and the next couple of days and all this past week, we've been talking about receiving or conceiving your miracle. And uh, the Lord, this is, uh, as I've said, this is 2018. This is the year of overflow. And God is pouring out the miraculous upon his people. And I'm so thankful for that. And uh, so we just have to be in a position to receive the miraculous. And today, you know what? Every time you're tuning in on these devotions, every time you're uh, praying, every time you're getting before God, every time you're taking what you're learning from these devotions and you're meditating on them, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you through them and to lead you <clears throat> in what you're learning. You know what? You're positioning yourself. That's what you're doing. You are allowing these this this teaching, these devotions to position you to receive from the Lord. And so I thank you so much for tuning in today. And we're about to jump right back into the word of God. We have been uh, studying out of first Samuel chapter one, first Samuel chapter one. And uh, we've been, we've been just seeing how um, the Lord was walking with Hannah for her to receive the miraculous. And, uh, the first day, as I was talking to you, the first day uh, we talked about to conceive or to receive your miracle. You cannot be satisfied with less. You have to be. Don't be satisfied with less. Be satisfied with God's best. And uh, and so we talked about not not uh, receiving what's less than what God has for us. Number two, on the, on day one, we talked about that if you're going to receive your miracle, you have to be willing to go through your miserable. You have to be willing to go through the season of miserable to step into the season of miracle. And uh, and I believe the Lord allows that because when you step into the miraculous out of the season of the miserable, you give him all the glory for it. He gets all the praise for what is happening. And then yesterday, uh, or, yeah, yesterday we began to talk about some uh, other things about how to receive a miracle. And uh, we talked about how the enemy will provoke you at the place of conception or the place of reception. You cannot allow the enemy to keep you out of the place of conception. You've got to put yourself in the place where you can conceive and receive your miracle. And then also number four, yes, number four yesterday was this to receive your miracle. You've got to be willing to weep before the Lord. You've got to be willing to pour out your soul before God. And I believe there's times when we do that, that the heavens open. So let's go on to number five today. Number five today. And I want you to I want to just direct your attention to verse 11. And uh, so Hannah has been weeping before the Lord. Now we pick up in verse 11. And this is what the Bible says. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me. And not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Now, this is a powerful. We, I could probably preach for an hour on verse 11 alone, 
because it has some some very unique points about prayer, but it also has some unique points about our heart being lined up with God's will. So number five, I want to just tell you this today. Number five, to conceive your miracle, the miracle must have God first and you second. Now, that's a powerful truth right there. And I'm about to undig and un, un, pull the layers out from behind that or over it. it. To conceive your miracle, it must have God first and you second. Many times when we're asking for a miracle, many times when we're seeking God for a, a, mir a miracle or God to break through or God to show up in, a, in an amazing way, we're putting us first and we don't even know it. We're putting us first because... Well, let's just lay it out for what it is. We have a need. We have a need. And that need sometimes can be the difference between life or death. It can be sometimes the difference between uh, whether we get to keep our home or not. Sometimes it can be the difference between uh, one of our loved ones going to hell or heaven. I mean, it's a serious need. We're not we're not just asking God to give us a piece of bubble gum here. It's a serious need. And but with that being said, even when it's that serious, even when it's that important, even when it has vexed our soul that much, even when it has broken our heart that much, God still must be first. God still must be first and we must be second. And I want you to grab something that Hannah did in verse 11 that I believe in just my personal opinion. I believe it raised the eyebrows of God. I believe it, it. I mean, I believe it turned the face of the Lord towards her. And this is what she said. If you'll remember me, God, and don't forget me. In other words, if you'll look upon me, Lord, and work this miracle, this is what I'm going to do. If you'll give me a male child, I'll give him to you. And you can have him, Lord. Now, think about this. What was she doing? She was saying, God, I want I want a child. I want a, I want a son. But you're first in it. You're first. You're first before my miracle, God. And and I'm second in it. But you're first. You see, when you begin to do that right there, I believe God begins to turn his eyes and his ears and his face towards you. I really do, because now you're saying, just as Jesus said in the garden, Father, not my will, but thine be done, God. Your will be done, Lord. God, I need this, but Lord, I'm putting you first in it. God, we need a financial breakthrough, but Lord, I'm putting you first in it. God, we need you to save our prodigal, but I'm putting you first in it, Lord. God, we need you to heal our loved one, God. The doctors have given a bad report. Nobody can help them, but I'm putting you first in it. You know what the th three Hebrew boys did? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They put God first in it. They was about to go to this fiery furnace. And they said, and they were basically, I'm just going to paraphrase and kind of put you in way I think about it. They were mocking and saying, look at these boys right here. They think God's going to save them. They think they think their Lord's going to show up. They're about to go to a furnace that's been heated up seven times hotter than it usually is to the point to where the men who are heating it up were dying to heat it up. And this is what they said. They said, our God's going to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow. What were they saying? You know what? God's going to work a miracle and I'm putting him first in it. And even if he doesn't show up for the miracle, he's still first. Man, I'm telling you, when you do that, you begin to draw the attention of heaven because God is saying, I want to give you the miracle. I want you to have the miracle, but I also want to be first in your miracle. I don't want to be second. I don't want you to get your miracle. You know, it's such a shame. I've seen this before. Uh, in the church and in people's lives where people come and seek God. They're coming to church. They're doing everything. They're, they're sowing seed. They're tithing. They're trying to live their lives right. And they need God to do something for them. And God shows up for them out of his mercy and out of his grace. 
whether it be financial, whether it's healing a body or whether it's giving them a child, healing their marriage, whatever it is, God shows up. And when they get it, they walk away and they do not come back. Can't find them in the house of God no more. Can't, they're not really serving the Lord no more. What a shame. What a shame. Because they received a miracle and God's not first. And I'm telling you, when that happens, you're inviting a curse on your life. You see, you're going to receive the miracle from the Lord. God needs to be first and you need to be second. And Hannah, Hannah said, no, not only will I give him to you, Lord, but I'll let him be. I'll let him be someone you can use. No razor's going to hit his head, God. He can be an anointed vessel for you and you can use him all the days of his life. And, uh, and the Lord showed up. Let's go on in verse 12. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now, the point I want to bring out right here is she continued praying. She continued praying. She continued praying. To receive your miracle, there's, there's sometimes seasons where you have to continue praying. You have to continue praying. I know sometimes people kind of debate on which one is greater faith. Which one is greater faith? To come before the Lord and ask once and believe that it's already done or to come before the Lord many times and continuously come before God until it is done. Which one's greater faith? And according to Jesus's teachings in the gospel, it's the one that continues to come before God. That's greater faith because he gives a couple. Uh, he gives a couple uh, stories. He gives a couple parables. One is about the lady who needs justice from a wicked judge. And the Bible says that even though the judge didn't care nothing for her because she continued to come before him, he gave her justice. The second parable was about the man who went to his friend at night and had some guests come to his home at night and he needed some bread. And his friend says, listen, I've already shut the door. Me and my family are in bed. I'm not, I don't want to get up. But the Bible says because he persist, he was persistent in asking. His friend got up and gave him the bread. And Jesus said, also will my, will my father give you for those who continue to ask. And then another time he says, those who ask shall receive. Those who knock the door shall be open and those who seek shall find. Well, we know that if you look up that, that grammar in the Greek, it says this, those who ask and keep asking, those who seek and keep seeking, those who knock and keep knocking. And so Hannah, the Bible says, and she continued praying. I want to ask you something. How have you continued praying for your miracle? Have you continued seeking God for your miracle or did you pray? And when you didn't see it happen, you gave up on it because we've all been guilty of this before. We've all been guilty of, of God speaking to us. God's showing us something that he wants to do. And we prayed about it when it did not happen. We walked away from it. And I'm telling you, there, there are some miracles. There are some breakthroughs. There are some, uh, 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 just, Things that God does in our lives that require continuous prayer. Daniel, I heard your prayer from day one, but the prince of Persia resisted me now these 21 days. And I had to invite uh, uh, Michael, the archangel, I'm, read, I'm quoting from Daniel, to come and help me to do battle. And when he came and helped me, I was released to come and give you the interpretation of or the answer to your prayer. You see, there's some things that require continued prayer. There are some things that require you interceding, you fasting, you going before God over it, over and over and over and over again. And when you continuously go before God, I'm telling you, the Lord will show up. It's, if it's according to his perfect will, he's going to show up in your life and you will not be denied. You might be delayed, but you won't be denied. God will show up and he will perform that miracle. Have you continued praying? Have you continued seeking? Have you continued knocking? Have you continued asking? 
I see this many times with people who want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And they go, they, they come down or they hear a word or someone tells them about it. They pray for them. And for whatever reason, they don't receive at that time. And then they're like, well, I just didn't receive it. So it must not be for me or it must not be real. Well, do you realize that when I talked about asking, seeking and knocking, that that is actually within context of the of the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible goes on and says, thus he spake of the Holy Spirit who had not been given yet because Jesus had not been glorified. So when we're coming before God for miracles, we need not give up church. We need not quit. We keep praying. We keep seeking God. Let me ask you something. What if someone had your child? Let's say you're praying for your child. What if someone had your child and had them chained up and you knew that if you kept asking, they would let them go? How many times would you come before that person asking? I tell you, it'd be day and night. You wouldn't leave them alone. You wouldn't leave them alone. And every day when you step to that person or when you step to that person that had them in captivity, you would have faith saying today could be the day. Well, beloved, let me tell you something. There's people praying for God to work miracles in their children, work miracles in their marriage, work miracles, miracles in their health, work miracles in their finances, work miracles in their ministries, work miracles in all over the place. And let me tell you something, the God of all heaven, he's not holding your cap. He's not holding your miracle in captive. He can release your miracle to you. And he is willing to do it. Sometimes it just takes some persistent and consistent prayer. And each day we go before him, we should go with the faith and the attitude. Today is the day our miracle will be released. Today is the day that everything can change. Today is the day I can receive my healing. Today is the day I can get my financial breakthrough. So today I want to I want to encourage you. I'm about to pray for you. It is Worship Wednesday. And uh, I want to I want to pray for you that you will not grow weary in your well doing. The Bible says uh, that to know this. That God do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows that he shall reap for he who sows to the flesh shall reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit that's in prayer shall reap everlasting life. And so today when I pray for you, I'm going to pray that your faith shall remain and that your prayer life shall be persistent and consistent, that you will persevere through the times of anguish. That you'll persevere through the times of, of darkness. That you'll persevere through the times of the valleys and the times that you're being provoked by the enemy. You'll persevere through them and you'll receive all that God has for you today. In the name of Jesus. And I believe it for you today. Father, I thank you for every person. Your dear children watching. Your dear sons and daughters watching God. And Lord, today... As I begin to teach and, and Father, just share my heart and share from your word today. God, I'm decreeing and declaring that today their miracle is going to show up in the name of Jesus. Father, as we come before you persistent and consistent in prayer, I thank you that you hear our prayers. I thank you that you answer our prayers. I thank you, God, that you are more than willing and able to release miracles in our lives. And I ask today in the name of Jesus that miracles would show up in the lives of your sons and daughters watching and listening. And I thank you for that right now. Father, I ask that you would help us, that our faith shall remain, that we should not grow weary in well doing and that God, we would come before you with faith and we would come before you with humility, yet boldly approaching the throne of grace. Through the blood of Jesus, asking God, knowing that you will perform because you reward those who diligently seek you. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus mighty and holy name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you for watching today. Uh, just one more time. I, our, I, today, I just want to tell you 
We are in this wonderful, man, just amazing place, Hope Farms right here. This is, I'm upstairs. I'm actually, uh, we're actually filming right here in the house that is going to receive these wonderful ladies that God is going to begin to put back together for his glory and his praise and his name's sake. And so with that being said today, if you feel, if the Holy Spirit is leading you to sow seed, to give to this ministry, Hope Farms, listen, you can do it and you can email hopefarms2018 at gmail.com and uh, just reference it, reference it to uh, Deborah. And whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to give, just be obedient. Every dime you give is not only tax deductible, but it goes uh, right to this ministry, Hope Farms. And that, and it is for uh, seeing ladies with life controlling issues be set free, be healed, be restored, and uh, be and walk in a, in, a, in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So thank you so much. I appreciate you watching today. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotionals are available across many platforms, including Facebook, the Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel, and the Abundant Life app. If you are in the South Atlanta or North Macon for Scythe areas, we would love to have you come to visit one of our campuses. For locations or more information about Abundant Life Church, please visit us at AbundantLifeChurch.com. And remember, this is your season to overflow. Your season is about to change.